welcome to Furious Driving and today we're off on a mini adventure, well not mini adventure, a rover adventure because we're heading off to the Furious Driving Social up at the Motorist at Leeds in Yorkshire. If you're watching this tonight it will be tomorrow morning so check out the website for the Motorist where you find last minute tickets to come along and say hello. There was masses of debate here, well between me and myself as to which car to take uh, because it's been a long difficult choice. I really wanted to take the Alpha 145 because that is a long term favourite car of mine. But let's get on the road and tell you about the choices that have been made. First of all, take a look at how shiny the 200VI comes up. Isn't it lovely? It's also incredibly full. It turns out you can fit an awful lot into the back of a little hatchback. I have got enough snacks for two days. Got camera, laptop, uh, million ton of merch, my new improved two cup cup holder um, designed for front seats rather than in between like on the Crown Victoria. Phone holder is at the ready. Phone, oops. Phone holder is at the ready. So let's hit the road. And yes, I know the alternator uh, belt needs tightening. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a pit stop at the local post office because you forgot to get any float change because you got a bunch of t-shirts and badges and stuff to sell. So uh, only, only able to get 15 pounds of change out. So please anyone coming along tomorrow, bring a, bring a card <laughs> because I've got my sum up device. But yeah, that was the first stop. I'm now also realizing I need to get petrol and that's gonna be really expensive. And that's partly why I've chosen this car. So what was I saying? Yes, I really wanted to take the Alpha 145. It's a long-term favorite on the fleet. I love it. I've got t-shirts printed of it. It's a great car. It makes an amazing noise and every journey in it is an event. However, when it was on the lift um, up at uh, Go Italia, I did notice that one of the front wheels, the front passenger wheel, has got a flat spot, not on the tire, on the alloy rim. And uh, I'd, I'd never noticed it. And Jamie was like, well, you, you would have noticed that which, well, I, I clearly hadn't. Um, anyway, I took it down the dual carriageway on the way home, and guess what? I've really noticed it. To the point that I thought that's actually potentially dangerous. So, um, car is restricted to local journeys until I get that sorted out, and those are kind of hard to come by, those uh, Teledyne alloys. So then it came down to a toss up between the Rover 200 VI, which I'm in, and the Crown Victoria. And clearly this one won are, well hang on, let me get the second pit stop and I'll tell you some more. Second pit stop is petrol, which is gonna be expensive. Well, that's only 50 pounds, which isn't too bad to be fair. But then I did take this car for a quick test drive last night to make sure it wasn't gonna let me down somewhere. And um, yes, yeah, so it's still at about, well, nearly half a tank in it. So oh, yes. Ugh. Well, anyway, that is kind of part of the second reason, or third reason, whatever, I've lost count of reasons. Why I'm taking this car, not the Crown Victoria. I love the Crown Victoria. It's possibly my favorite car on the fleet at the moment. Um, but where I'm gonna be going to en route is some pretty tiny Yorkshire lanes. And um, yeah, it's not, it was pretty good on fuel on the motorway. It gets over 30 mpg. I mean, when I did the NEC in it, it did Birmingham and back in uh, under a tank of fuel. It was really quite good. The trouble is, this is about twice as far as that. And this car, in theory, should do better. So, well, fingers crossed, we'll see how we go. That was 50 pounds and, well, I thought it was full. It's clicking off, but it's uh, not showing full on the, on the gauge though. So I'm now on the M2 heading north because my destination is in the north with a capital T. Which as a confirmed southerner, this is a slight worry. I've had my shots, I've got my passport, so I've got a snorkel just in case. We should be fine though, I'm, I'm told they're very nice up there. But this car, according to the internet, should get a combined MPG of 44, which is well, quite decent actually. And on a run, if I'm not pushing it, I'll just cruising it sort of dead on 70 at the moment, even letting it drop down to a little bit slower because I'm, I'm not in a hurry. We should be seeing perhaps even more. But I'm not going directly to the hotel tonight. I'm stopping off on the way in elsewhere part of Yorkshire to go and visit a car chum, to go and look at some of their cars. And, um, and that's quite a good link because I'm currently listening to the Car Chum podcast on that their internet. But I do have one more pit stop to make before I set the sat-nav and find out what time I'm going to arrive because I needed 
a phone case for my phone because I've just given my old phone to my son and I now have a new phone with no case and I don't want to scratch it and I need a new toothbrush because I had a fancy electric toothbrush and the battery died on it so I need to go and purchase an ordinary boring manual one. So that was a successful stop off. We got ourselves toothbrushes, uh, eco-friendly bamboo ones. Got ourselves a phone case because my new phone needs to not get scratched. Got ourselves a free pasty or pastry, sorry, from a giveaway at a new cafe. That was quite exciting. Car is running okay. I'll give you a bit of a heads up on that in a second. I just tapped in our destination. I've now got just over four hours. I'm not quite sure how many miles. Uh, yeah, four hours, 237 miles to my destination, which is our stop off en route. That's the Bluetooth kicking in on the radio so I can keep on listening to Car Chum. And in just over five minutes, I've got Popmaster. This day gets better. to the beautiful blue Kentish skies. And already I'm wishing I'd taken the Crown Vic because it's got working air conditioning. And this has got, well, it's got a working sunroof. So I'll pop the uh, little ventilation thing on there. And off we go. Oh, check out the color scheme on that beetle. Silver with a red roof, it looks fantastic. Only a real hero with exquisite taste. Good spec a car in that manner. Pop master, and we're just starting to queue before the head of the Dartford Crossing Tunnel. So I'm hoping either this goes really fast and get through whilst they're still in the preamble, or I get stuck here for about three or four minutes so I can listen to the questions. Here we go. 1972, Slade, three weeks number one. Crazy now. Ocean Drive, um, Lighthouse Family. Six points. Bonus question. Danny Wilson, crikey. Mary's Prayer. Baby Bird, oh, you're gorgeous. Donna Summer, I don't want to get hurt. Funky Cold Medina, Cindy Lauper, oh, 1984. No, 89, oh God, well out there. Bonus question, name is Mary. Singing narrator from something about Mary. No idea. Jonathan Richmond, still no idea. Cheap Thrills, 2016. Oh, I can't remember. Sia, of course it was Sia. Stomp in 2000. Steps, okay. Everything, 1997. Mary J. Bilge. That wasn't great. Nice. Let's get an MX-5 one day. One of the few cars that make Mrs. Furious happy to see on the driveway. So I'm now 120 miles, plus the small distance I forgot to zero the counter in, into this journey. I'm not actually going to buy a coffee here because I've bought a flask and some stuff to make my own. Uh, but I am going to go and use their facilities. Thank you Starbucks for the uh, clean, tidy facilities. The car is doing really well. The car is actually running, uh, touch wood at this point, the car is running extremely nicely. Uh, it's cruising along 70 miles an hour, it's about 3000 RPM. It's not loud, it's very comfortable. Um, what is good is the radio is nice. The Bluetooth connection to the phone is really good, so if I'm not listening to the radio, I've got Audible, I've got my podcast and everything else on, which is great. Um, one thing that isn't great is the position of the steering wheel. This is basically the straight on position. I had it tracked the other day by a fast fit place and I need to take it back. I've not had time to take it back. I knew it wasn't perfect, but it's not right at all. Um, so when I set the wheel straight, the car drives to the right. So I need to do something else about that. Anyway, right, time to make a quick cup of coffee and get back on uh, the road. The problem with pulling back onto the A1 is that the slip roads are basically non-existent. So I'm quite glad we have got this relatively rapid VI to get back onto the road in. cruise back into our economy mode. Yeah, so the car, as I was saying, and I'm going to touch wood at this point, is doing very well indeed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. It's a relaxing cruiser. I mean, that said, we've only done dual carriageway and motorway for the last 120 miles, pretty much. 
So I'm looking forward to getting off these big roads onto some smaller, more interesting ones in a little while. And that's an interesting car. I do quite like the i3, especially the range extender. It's a really usable car, as EVs go. And behind us, you can't see it, because it's behind that van you might see in the wing mirror, is uh, a Peugeot RCZ. A really interesting thing. And a few other interesting cars in the road. There's a couple of um, MX-5s in convoy, a couple of Beetles going the other way in convoy. Lots of new Land Rovers around the place. That is interesting. And we're actually not that far from that Volvo Breakers place. Here comes the Peugeot. They're cool. I like those a lot. And there's a the Harrier. There's the Harrier Jump Jet uh, Gate Guardian RAF. Is that Wittering, does that say? I missed that. I wasn't really watching. One thing I've noticed about driving this car, apart from the uh, lack of pointing in the right direction steering, is that the mirrors are absolutely tiny on it. Really, 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 really tiny mirrors. Actually quite hard to see stuff in them. Would you look at the colour of that adorable, and I mean properly sweet, Astra Estate. That's like metallic salmon pink. It's beautiful. The things you see on the road, eh? Don't think you see that on the far side of the road. A Rover P5. Oh no, hope he's alright. Nothing too serious gone wrong there. Not a lot we can do from over here though. Well, we are now 192 miles and change into this journey. Another 60 odd miles to go to our first stop off of the day. And the traffic has been pretty slow. And we're going to be arriving about an hour later than I intended to. Um, which is not great. So the car is nice and comfortable, but my leg position is starting to get a bit wearing and not that comfy and this seat well it's very very comfy it's so warm really really warm and sticky in it it's very soft but very very hugging which i guess is a good thing if you're on a cold day not so much on a warm day with no egg on well, the phone which actually just flew off on a bump unexpectedly and landed on the seat uh, it scared the living bejesus out of me a minute ago um, that has suggested a shortcut to um, save us 25 minutes of traffic. So I'm gonna move left in a moment and head towards the M18 apparently. Oh, this is exciting. Junction 33, Sheffield with the M1. This is, all the words in the wrong order. This is when I used to go to college. This is the exit I took to get to my place I was staying. Wow, this brings back memories. I used to do this almost every week towards the end of my course because I've had a weekend job back in Kent and weekdays at uh, college and um, yeah, so I used to do the, M the length of the M1 virtually every weekend in a Rover 2000. Good times. 60 mile an hour speed limit for air quality. I've read about this, I've not experienced it. Does that mean if you're driving an electric car you can go more, more than the speed limit? I'm curious, I'm genuinely curious. If the speed limit is hit purely for emissions, then why can't EVs drive faster? Someone answer that. Well, we're now in the north, for sure. There are hills and dales and other northern things. And now we're getting some proper landscape and some proper roads. The 200 VI is built for this kind of thing, stretching its legs on these fantastic open, oh, open streets, open roads. 60 mile an hour national limit is just nice for this kind of thing. It is a shame though when you get to these fantastic open roads and you get stuck behind cars that are 30 years newer than the one you're in. Wow, now that is a view and a half. We're at the top of the world up here. Top of the world, baby, top of the world. Very Jane Terrier. Do the Lost in Seven to be trundling around here. That'd be great fun. But 
properly windy looking at these trees. I brought my little uh, furious driving banner for the stand, but I think it might be uh, disappearing into the next county if I try and stick it up tomorrow morning. That, that boily noise is probably a bad thing. I want to pull over somewhere, but I really can't. There's no to stop. Uh, sounds like coolant venting. I've still got okay water temperature. That's always sitting in the middle still. I'll turn the engine off again. Let it cool down a bit. I don't know what's going on. It's been sat in traffic for about 40 minutes though. As soon as I get off this road, I'm gonna pull over and pop the bonnet. But this is just nose to tail traffic and it's too narrow to stop. Right, I was finally able to stop. I couldn't pull over into the anywhere because there's just car park restrictions and stuff. Oh, this has been bubbling like crazy. You can see some dampness on the outside of the, um, the expansion tank. That's what I was hearing bubble. But it's still got a decent level of coolant in it. I think basically we're just on the cusp of overheating because we sat in that traffic for so, so long. And it's quite a warm day today, so I think we're okay. All right, seems like it was all okay, no damage done. Um, I couldn't stop on the road because it was just gridlock. And the only place I could see to park was a pub car park where you had to put your number plate in and there's cameras and all kinds of other stuff. The usual dire uh, of modern life. However, I was turning it off and just let the car roll down the hill so the engine was cooling down. And I think that prevented any kind of overheating. It didn't lose more than a couple of spoonfuls of, of coolant just through the venting system, which is meant to do. So I think we're all okay. And we're back on quicker roads again. Airflow is flowing. The temperature gauge never went, well, it went a tiny bit high. That's when the bubbly noise was started but didn't like peak like it was an HGF situation, which I would not expect from this car anyway, with the new BW750 uh, gasket in there. Did we turn the left here? Yes, we do. Hey, uh, shifting load in the back, oh my word. Well, I don't know if you can hear me because I've not got the microphone plugged into the GoPro, but I'm currently at the highest motorway point in all of the UK on the M62. I think it said 332 metres above sea level. I should probably Google that and stick it in a caption. But I've now left my uh, visitor, my mysterious visitor for a future video behind and I'm on the way to the hotel with the addition of a new spare wheel for this car. I seem to have problems that go in series of, well, several. And so uh, Crown Vic didn't have a spare wheel. This car had a spare wheel in it that was completely wrong for the car. I've now got the right spare wheel for it, which is exciting. So there we have it. We've made it all the way up here to that there, Yorkshire in what is known as the North. And the little Rover did not miss an ab beat all day, apart from a slight, well, on the verge of maybe starting to think about overheating when it was sat in traffic for a really long time and it was actually pretty warm. The car is quite dirty. I've got some cleaning gear in the car. I'll give that a bit of a polish up tonight after dinner. So yeah, I've been really impressed. It was actually, apart from a quick test drive last night up and down the motorway and a couple of short runs around just locally, that is the first time since it's been MOT, since it had the head gasket, since the new brakes, that has been more than, I think, 10 miles anywhere. And now it's done halfway up the country. I think it was running for about six or seven hours today. It was an absolute trooper. This car is brilliant. It's earned its place on the fleet. If I decide to get rid of it, it's suddenly gonna be quite difficult. I should have left it at home. Anyway, so this is what I'm gonna go and edit tonight. So by the time you see this, it'll be Saturday morning. If you are in the motorist area of Yorkshire, near Leeds basically, come along, say hello. I'll be there until about one o'clock, I think in the afternoon. Come and see the 200 VI. Come and see all the other subscriber cars that have turned up and come buy a hat or a t-shirt or a mug or something. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon, maybe even today.